Hi everyone, this is going to be a video explaining how to add the Blender exporter add-on for Jagged Alliance 3 and how to prepare your scene for export. And first we are going to start by opening your game installation folder, which is in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Jagged Alliance 3, because this is where you can find some useful stuff and the exporter itself. But first let's open a Motus folder and see that you have the samples, you have the documentation and the Blender exporter there. What we are going to use for this is uh, the sample scene of the gun that you have as a sample mod because we really want to take a closer look at it. So I have, uh, I have it in assets, in sample gun folder, in Blender scene and I have this folder copied on my desktop for a reference. Here you have the exa uh, exactly the same scene and what you can see is that you have the Blender file and you also have image files and those are the textures that are used for our entity when it's going to be exported. Also in the Jagged Alliance installation folder in the mod tools you can check more about uh, the entities in the documentation. Here you can see you have uh, all the files you need to learn more about how modding works and especially in the entity file you can see more information about exporting, about everything we are going to talk about in this video. But now let's jump to some demonstrations. First of all we are going to start by installing the Blender uh, add-on and we are going to open Blender. What I really want to focus on is the version right now because um, in order for everything to work properly for you, you should be working on a version that's before uh, 4.0. In my case, I'll be working on 3.6. And I will start by just adding the add-on. So we are going to go to the edit menu, to preferences, add-ons, and we are going to click the button install. So right now I'm just going to go on my desktop, choose the shortcut for uh, Jagged Alliance 3, which will jump in my Steam folder, Steam Apps, Common, Jagged Alliance 3. I'm going to go to Mod Tools and select the zip file, which is Hemimon Games Blender Exporter and just click Install. So right now we have to enable the add-on. And you will see that here in the side menu, uh, a new panel will be available for you. So this, this is how you will know that you have installed the add-on. Right now, there isn't anything uh, that you can fill in or that you will notice, but this is because we haven't set the scene properly and we need to do that. Uh, but before we start working on our uh, example gun. I will just open the reference scene for the gun we already have uh, shipped with the game. So I will just open the reference file and we can take a closer look at how it's structured. So basically what you need to remember is that you can export a file only, uh, you can export a mesh only if it's under an origin. So <clears throat> the structure is that you have an empty plane access object that is parenting your mesh. And this is what we have here. So the reference scene uh, has a lot of things in it. We don't need all of them. Some of them are just for reference as mentioned. So you're not definitely going to need all of those stuff for um, a different type of gun, for example. But let's check what we have here. So right now we have a hand reference, which is very important. Uh, and we have bullet reference. We have the origin and under origin, we can see the weapon. And under the weapon, we can see that we have other axes that are just uh, that have like names. Those are our spots. So this is the spot where you can uh, add muzzles. This is a spot where you can add a magazine and this is the left hand grip spot. But you can also see that the origin itself of the gun is where you place the right hand. So this is definitely what you need to consider that this spot here 
is where the unit is going to place its right hand. Uh, the other stuff in this scene are the magazine, which is a separate entity that can be exported from the same scene. And you have like a bullet, you have the hand as a reference, you don't need those. But let's just check what happens when we uh, click on one of the meshes. In this case, this is the weapon. We can see that here in our exporter panel, we have uh, to fill in some details, such as entity name, mesh name, before we can jump into exporting. And when we click on the export button, we will see all the meshes that are structured properly and that are available for you to export and load in your mod. Uh, what we have here is that we have additional meshes for a level of detail. So we have one mesh with more details and one mesh with less details, which is our level of detail mesh. Uh, we won't be needing those in all cases, but it's good to have them and consider them uh, if you want to make a complex entity. And we also have a magazine. This is definitely not um, uh, for in every case. So if you want to just remove those, you can remove them and not use them. And the same goes for the spots as well. So if you're not going to use a left hand grip because you want a single hand weapon, you can just remove those. But we will uh, see this when we jump into creating our first scene. And the last thing that I want to mention is that in our reference folders, we have our textures. Uh, this is very important because you cannot use any materials that are generated in Blender. You need to place uh, image files in our Hemimont maps places. So I will just show you where this goes. In our material panel for each of the meshes, we have under surface, we can close surface, we can close settings and we can see that we have Hemimont material. And under maps, this is where we place our base color, our normal map, roughness, and there goes other additional um, slots for maps. And depending on the entity, you, you will have different types of maps placed here. But this is how we are going to generate the textures for the mesh in the game. You cannot use any other type of uh, generating materials from Blender. You have to place them as images here. They can be uh, TGA type of files or simple PNGs. And we are going to use simple PNGs for our, uh, for our example gun. <coughs> so just to summarize what we need to have in each scene before exporting, we need to have an origin object. And in case with the gun, this origin is where our right hand is going to be placed. We have the mesh under the origin. And under each uh, mesh, we can place the spots that are going to be used in the game for placing additional uh, weapon components or the left hand. And we need to make sure that our materials are, um, <coughs> are using like images for the maps so we can export the weapon with them. Okay, so this is for now and let's jump into our uh, new gun that we're going to create and adjust according to the scene. Uh, before I place uh, my other mesh, I'm just going to get rid of the objects that I'm not going to use. For example, I'm not going to uh, use a magazine because I'm not I'm not going to need this in my scene. And I will just remove the level of details meshes as well. So here I'm just removing the second weapon that's lower a level of detail weapon. And uh, just for my own convenience, I'm going to remove the parenting. So I will just remove those spots. I'll just clear parent without P and I'm going to remove the parent from this, uh, from our, from my origin. Uh, this is going to be more convenient for me because I can just rearrange them when I place the other mesh. Right now, we're just going to select this this collection and rename it. And while I'm s I have this collection selected, I'm going to file 
import and I will just select the OBJ file format because this is uh, what I have right now and I'm just going to go to blaster kit and here I have a folder that contains only OBJ and the material file so I'll just select OBJ and right now I can adjust this mesh and you can see that it's placed under my collection so it's going to be very easy for me to work this way uh, right now I'm just going to start with the transformation I'm going to rotate it and I can adjust its place Uh, and right now what I need to be very careful about is uh, the hand and how I'm going to place the grip and adjust where the origin should be. So it will take um, a few minutes for me to adjust this. Uh, this is definitely going to be just one uh, single hand gun. So Yep, okay, and right now I'm just going to adjust the handle. It should be longer, so we have more place for the hand itself. I'll go to editing mode, x-ray view, and I'm just going to select this part here and move it downwards. Of course, you should be careful like not to make very destructive changes so we make sure everything looks uh properly but yeah we will jump into showing how the entity is going to be imported a bit later but right now what we need to do is first adjust the spots okay so for muzzle uh, should be here we don't need a bullet. I'm going to the ladles. Left hand grip. We are not going to have a left hand grip on this weapon. Uh, we are not going to use the magazine as well. So right now we are just going to need the origin. I'll place it here. And right now I can uh, start with parenting the object. So muzzle is like blaster is going to be the parent of muzzle right now we can see we have it and origin is going to be the parent of blaster okay now we have rearranged some stuff okay so this is the scene that we have I'm going to delete the previous weapon and right now when we move origin we can just see if the entity is going to look okay with the hand reference it's going to be a bit tight and it's a small one uh, but just for demonstration purposes it can work i can just scale it a bit and uh, this is our weapon that's going to uh, that we're going to export but before that we can see that in our um, tool for exporting we need to fill in the entity name the mesh name uh, and of course not to forget that we need to add textures so uh, let's check out what is going on here uh, we will see that uh, you have like warnings and also the exporter recognizes what is going on so it can say okay this is an origin object it doesn't require name it doesn't require mesh name and so on right now we have this is a mesh object and it requires entity name so we're going to name this pink blaster this is also the name uh, that your mod is going to have for the entity you won't have the um, <coughs> option to rename it after you import it so uh, just be careful when you're naming those and also if you click on muzzle for example you will see that it says this is a spot so it will just require a spot name so right now we are sure that our scene is structured properly and when we click on export you will see that you have the pink blaster available for export 
but before we jump into exporting we need to make sure that we have the the colors for our gun in place and what i have done before this video is i prepared like the resources for this and i have the maps as image files so on our ready for export i have the files that i'm going to add in the map sections so for this material i have an image that's called metal it will take some time for me to add those so you can just jump ahead okay so we now add metal here we are going to add pink here we can add dark metal color and so on Uh, what you can see that uh, your changes might not be um, visualized immediately, but that's not an issue. In my case, I can just ch uh, change the color to mint. But let's just take it back to pink since we already named it Pink Blaster. Okay, and now we can export the entity. You will see a message here that says export finished and this file goes into a folder that's in your uh, roaming fi uh, folder under Jagged Alliance tree and you have exported entities so this will generate a few files um, you will see mapping materials meshes textures and your dot end file but uh, let's start the game and uh, we can start creating our mod so I open the mod manager, I'll open the mod editor and I will just create a new mod. I think I have one previously prepared for this. Yep, I have a pink blaster already set up for this example. So it has only two mod items. The first one is an inventory item uh, that's for the blaster and the second one is the entity itself. But right now I'm just going to select the three dots button to import to select the file and then import it i'll just click import and make sure you save and press the test button uh, when you import the entity just to make sure that it looks okay and right now what we are going to do is just open the inventory item mode item and I'm just going to search for the entity uh, property. So I will just delete the previous entity used and select my pink blaster one and save. And I can just use a cheat, for example, place test marks uh, for me to be, to be able to see how this is going to be held by the unit. What next? And just to test the inventory item, press the test button and the item will appear in the Mercs inventory. So this is how it looks. And if it doesn't appear well, you can always go back to your scene and make sure the origin is at the, at the right place. In my case, it's not. So I'll just clear the parent. And readjust. Uh, you can see that when you are making um, some type of changes uh, and things rearrange, uh, you can always apply your scale just to make sure that uh, all your transformations are properly applied. So right now I can just try to move my origin and then parent them back in. Yes. This should work better. Let's see, we can re-import it. 
for the ex export button again. Select Thing Blaster, OK. And then just go back to the game. Import ID, save, test. I be listening. And I'm just going to select a new mark. Whatever you say. And now I can see that she's almost properly yes. holding the gun. 